Why They Failed, weekly analysis of NMC OSKEY results with Nurse Meg and your host, Victoria. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Why They Failed with IOPS Medical. I'm your host, Victoria, and we are here with Nurse Meg. Hi, Meg, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> welcome back. Okay, um, let's get into the examples. So this is from the fluid balance station. The candidate failed to accurately transpose the information onto the fluid balance chart and failed to complete the fluid intake balance accurately. The candidate did not accurately transpose the intake oral and IV fluid. This resulted in an inaccurate calculation and documentation of the total input, total balance, and negative slash positive balance of the patient. Failing to accurately complete and document the fluid balance for a patient may result in the patient receiving an incorrect fluid regime for their clinical condition. Correct fluid balance monitoring is essential to avoid fluid overload or dehydration in the patient and to ensure that the patient receives the correct care and treatment. Okay, this feedback is relating to one of the skills stations and this is fluid balance. So you will be given a chart which has all of the ins and the outs of a patient and you will be expected to transpose that onto the fluid balance chart. So it's important you need great attention to detail to ensure that you are accurately documenting. You need to pay attention to what hour the patient had their oral fluids, IV fluids, or that they have perhaps voided, which will be going onto your output. So it's important to ensure that you're transposing this correctly. Check what time you're documenting it for, and then double check, check again. Any transposition errors mean that you may make mistakes when you're calculating what the totals are. And if you make mistakes calculating what the totals are, it means your balance will be incorrect. And it may mean that you denote negative or positive incorrectly as well. So it can set off a chain of events or chain of mistakes. So in the first instance, it's very important to ensure that you are transposing correctly, calculating the total input correctly, doing the same for the output. So transposing correctly and accurately in the output side of the fluid balance, calculating the total output correctly, and then using those two numbers to find your balance and denoting if it's negative balance or positive balance. It's very important that this is correct and there's no margin for error. It will either be right or wrong. So it's important to check your calculations and remember that you'll be provided a calculator so I would always advise that you use this just to try and avoid making any silly mistakes in calculating what your totals are. It is important that this is correct because based on their fluid balance, the patient may receive different treatment. So it's very important that this is accurate and correct. Are you an international midwife seeking to practice in the UK? Do you need to pass your NMC OSKEED midwifery exam so that you can do so? Then we've got you covered. You see, here at IELTS Medical, our NMC OSKE course for midwives is run for midwives by midwives. Our expert midwife-led team has the formula to help you pass your NMC midwifery OSKE the first time, practicing in our purpose-built OSKE course and practice rooms. We have all of the materials and equipment you need to prepare for your NMC OSKEY midwifery exam. And guess what? Through partnerships with local hospitals, we'll even assist with making your transition into UK practice as smooth as possible. Learn more at www.oskeymidwives.com. Okay, lovely. So this is from the assessment station. The candidate failed to document and provide a score using assessment tools, date, time, and signature of nurse to be included. The candidate failed to document the date or the time of the assessment on the National Early Warning Score news chart, leaving the section for date slash time blank. Failing to accurately document may result in a lack of continuity of care and the receiving professional may not know when the previous assessment was completed. 
In preparation for the reset, an example of a news chart is available on the Centre's Moodle site. Okay, so this feedback, we are in the assessment station. And what I think this feedback demonstrates is how accurate you need to be with your documentation. But in this instance, the station has been a fail and will be a reset because some very simple date, time and signature elements were missing from the documentation. So it's incredibly important that your documentation is full and completed every single time. If you don't complete the documentation, it doesn't matter how accurate the vital signs that you took were. It doesn't matter how comprehensive your holistic assessment was. It doesn't matter that you've done everything within your time. It will still be a reset. So please do pay attention to your documentation. There is a small box for the date and time, and we have spoken about this in previous episodes. Do ensure that the time that you're recording is the time of the scenario, which is provided to you on your briefing or in the instructions. So do make sure that that's the time that you are documenting. But please do make sure that you have checked and then double checked that all boxes that need to be completed on your news chart have been completed and nothing that needs a response is left blank. Okay, lovely. So this is also from the assessment station. The candidate failed to measure and document observations accurately. The candidate failed to undertake the pulse reading and the respiratory rate for a full two minutes. Failing to accurately document the pulse rate and respiratory rate could result in the National Early Warning Score news total score being inaccurately recorded. Um, failing to accurately document the pulse rate and respiratory rate could result in the National Early Warning Score news total score being inaccurately recorded. Observations must be recorded accurately to enable trends and changes in the patient's condition to be monitored and to enable other healthcare practitioners to have an accurate picture of the patient's condition. This poses a risk to the patient's safety. In preparation for the reset, an example of a news chart is available on the Centre's Moodle site. Okay, so this is the assessment station and it's relating to the measurement and documentation of observations. So this candidate has not accurately measured the pulse or the respiratory rate as it was not undertaken for a full two minutes. So that needs to be one minute or 60 seconds to manually count the pulse, plus one minute or another 60 seconds to count the respiratory rate. You should be counting those back to back and it should be the full two minutes. Remember that you can use either a fob watch or if you don't have a fob watch, you can use the clock which will be counting down the 20 minutes of your assessment station. It won't only be you that's checking that you're counting for two minutes, but the examiner will also be checking. And if it's any less than two minutes, it will be considered that the pulse and the respiratory rate are inaccurate, which would make your news total score inaccurate as well. And this has an effect on how often the patient would be monitored and indeed could pose a risk to patient safety. So it's very important that your vital signs are accurate when you measure them. And so for the pulse and respiratory rate, this means checking those for one minute each for a total of two full minutes no less. Well, that's all we have time for today. Meg, thank you so much for answering those examples. If you're watching, make sure to like and subscribe and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.